Christmas night all Christians seem to hear the news the angels bring. News of great joy, news of great joy. Fighting the hard to change your Angels that man with joy may see, all those who sing a new Then why should men on earth be sad, since our Redeemer made us glad? Then why should men on earth be sad? Since our Redeemer made us glad, when from our sin he set us free, all the world to gain our liberty. was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. All things were created by Him and for Him, and He is before all things, and by Him all things consist, and He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. He is Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. He is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Of the Father's love begotten, ere the worlds began to be. He is Alpha and Omega, He the source, the ending He. Of the things that are that have been, and that future you shall see. Evermore and evermore. This is He who had and seen us, and in all with one accord, whom the voices of the in their faithful word. Now he shines the long expectant. Let creation praise his Lord. Evermore and
But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be the ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all thy heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, 
and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And he, she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. But he made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. For ye know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that through he, though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Yeah. 
And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished, Accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn child, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for him in the inn. <laughs> Yeah. 
same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory, Glory to God, God in the, the highest, and, and on earth peace, good will toward men. men. Down the shining ranks of angels and anthem loud and long. Christ is born in love eternal and bound into joy and song. Hark the angels sing together songs that echo on forever till the sweet and blissful soul is born of love and life and glory. Christ, our salvation, 
then jubilation. Shepherds come to praise him. Ox and kneel before him. What a wonderful Joseph is watching, Joseph is watching for the sun so glorious. Truly coming, angels are voicing. Children come to praise him. Come sit before him, what a God has been. Truly coming, Christ has salvation. Shepherds come to praise him, oxen kneel before him, what a wonder God has been. What a wonder God has been. He was in the world. And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us, and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Thy throne and thy kingly crown, when thou camest to earth for me. But in Bethlehem's home was there found no room for thy holy nativity. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that, that at the, the name, name of Jesus, Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and, and that, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
Okay, thank you, choir. That was wonderful, wasn't it? It was really good. Uh, thank you to the Matskos for their hard work and the Raritans uh, for doing our reading today. That was also wonderful. I want to take just a few moments and talk to you um, about Christmas. I, I don't know if you've ever been in one of these situations where uh, you were in a crowd of people, maybe uh, in a store or um, in uh, in uh, a restaurant, somewhere where there are lots of people around, and something happened. You dropped a plate, uh, or you you dropped uh, something. You fell down, and everybody turned and looked at you. You ever have that moment where everybody just turned and looked at you, and then you were just horribly embarrassed, horribly embarrassed. I, uh, I've had situations like that happen to me. One is so awful I won't even tell you about it. It's sufficient to say uh, my son and I were in a, in a, a women's clothing store, and oh, that's as far as I can go. And, and I will tell you, it wasn't him. It was entirely me. Uh, he was a little boy, uh, and I was... Uh, uh, anyway, that's as far as I can go. I, I can't go further... <laughs> Uh, uh, it was horribly embarrassing. It was just terrible. Everybody stood and looked. And, and I think if you've ever been in that situation, you know for, for that brief moment of time, everybody just stops and stares. They gawk. It's like a train wreck. It's like a car accident on the highway. Uh, during the Christmas season, you've been in five uh, hours of traffic, uh, hour of which was just bumper to bumper at three miles an hour until you get up on the wreck and you go, wow, and everybody just kind of looks, and that's why everybody slowed down. Well, there are a few of those moments in the Bible, in the New Testament, and the word that the author uses, the authors use, is the word behold. It's, it's a word that just means Stop everything you're doing and look. I want you to look at something, right? So if I was, if I did that, right? You're a, you're a teacher, you're trying to get everybody's attention, you're outside, hey, everybody, right? Um, when I was in the military, it was a little different. They didn't clap their hands. Bam. Everybody snaps their attention. You ever seen a military formation come to attention? It's pretty impressive. You ever seen a march? It's equally impressive. The silent drill team, they don't even make sounds. They just kind of look at each other, and rifles are flying through the air, right? Look. I want to give you some of those attention moments for just a few moments. And the first one is in Luke 2. The first attention moment is when the angels appear to the shepherds. And they say, you already heard it. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. The first behold is for the shepherds to come and behold baby Jesus. That's the first behold. That's kind of what we do at Christmas. I mean, I know there's family traditions. Uh, I know some of you take those very seriously. You have Christmas in your home a week after Christmas, or you, or you all wear the same pajamas, or you wake up at three in the morning, whatever your traditions are, right? You've got those. But really what Christmas is about is what the angel said. Stop and look. In a manger is a baby swaddled in clothes, and he, he is the Lord of heaven. Look at him. And what we do at Christmas is we just kind of stop everything as believers, and we look, and we, we turn our eyes, not physically because we can't do that, but we turn our eyes on that manger, and we just look, and we see a little baby there, and we just recognize that in a in just kind of this forgotten moment in, in, in this little village, a tiny village, one of uh, the least among the thousands of Judah, all the villages that it could have been in, in, a, in a region that isn't particularly large, in that little village, the house of bread, in this little 
farming community is born a baby, and that's the Lord of glory. Look at him. Well, that's not the only behold. Years go by, Jesus grows up, and he is uh, in his early 30s, perhaps, around 30 years of age, and he comes to a man named John. We call him John the Baptizer. He was uh, sent by God. He's a cousin, actually, of Jesus. He is the son of Zacharias. And he, he comes, John has been preaching, repent. The kingdom of God is coming. And the people are coming to John to repent of their sins, and he's baptizing them. He baptized, in fact, he goes to different places. He's off in the wilderness, uh, I think down near the Negev, the southern part uh, of Judah. And then he goes over on the other side of the Jordan because there's some better places to baptize, more water. And so he baptizes over there. And Jesus comes to John there by the Jordan River. And, and what a lot of people don't realize, you just kind of read over one of these verses in your Bible, is that the, God had actually informed John that he would know who the Messiah was because the Messiah would be revealed to him in a very special way. And so Jesus shows up one day. John's already said, I'm not the Messiah. There's one among you who is the Messiah. I don't know who he is. But one day Jesus shows up and says, I need to be baptized of you. And John knows there's something wrong about that. He says, no, that's, that's, that can't be right. And Jesus says, no, do this because this is going to fulfill all righteousness. And, and there are a lot of reasons people give. Maybe Jesus is baptizing, being baptized, not for his own sins, but maybe for the sins of Israel. Some people say Jesus' is baptism is, is a sign uh, uh, of some sort that, that God is, is about to redeem Israel. But I think what actually one of the aspects of it, of all the possible answers that have been given, is, is when J Jesus comes out of the water, you remember what happens. Uh, the Holy Spirit comes down on him, and the Father speaks, this is my beloved Son, hear him. And it's at that moment, I think, that John then realizes this is the, this is the evidence that I was supposed to be waiting for. Oh, this is the Messiah. Because the next day, he says to his disciples, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so the second of our beholds is just to stop and look at him. Stop and look at Jesus. Well, there's another behold that comes later. It's a few years later. Jesus has been preaching. He, he and John are actually preaching similar messages. Uh, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus is also healing. He's drawing a larger crowd. In fact, the Pharisees comment and say, Jesus is baptizing more disciples than John, though he himself is not doing the baptizing. It's his disciples who are baptizing. And there's about a year where John and Jesus' ministry are overlapping. And during that year, it's called the year of obscurity. Jesus, that's where he turns the water into wine. That's where he meets uh, Nicodemus. That's where he meets the woman at the well. It's all during this time. And then John is put in prison and Jesus kind of comes out of his shell now. And he, he's got a group of disciples with him. They come into Galilee and now he's, he's the preacher. He, of all Israel, there's only one now. John's in prison, and he's saying, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The king is right here at the door. And for a few years, Jesus preaches this way until there comes a time where he just so agitates the Sadducees particularly, but also the Pharisees. But the Sadducees, he's ruining their business in the temple, keeps casting out the, the, the uh, money changers, that they, they, they get really upset, and so they decide that they're going to have him murdered by the Romans. They concoct this plan. They conspire with one of his disciples named Judas uh, that they will arrest him and that they will bring him to trial. And you remember that during that trial, they actually turn him over to a Roman governor named Pilate. Pilate actually is not a, an insignificant governor. He's not one of the better known governors in the Roman Empire. Uh, sometime later, he so agitates the Jews that the Romans kicked him out. 
he wasn't particularly very good at his job. But Pilate is there, and he doesn't really want to crucify Jesus. He, he knows there's no reason, there's no legal basis to crucify Jesus. And yet he brings him out, and, and he has had Jesus scourged, and the Romans have mocked him and because he's the, their king, right? He's the king of the Jews, and they're putting him down. And Pilate says, behold the man. And there's our third behold. And, and it's really quite incredible because now we look at Jesus. He's, he's not just the baby in the manger, and he's not just the Lamb of God. He now becomes the sin bearer. All the prophecies about him that we think about when we think about Christmas are now fully coming into fruition. Jesus is taking away the sins of the world because he's bearing them on himself. In fact, people question, what does it mean that Jesus is the lamb? And some say, well, he's the lamb in the sense that he, he takes the sins. He's killed as the lamb. Uh, some people think maybe this is more like the scapegoat uh, who sent the, the animal sent out into the wilderness, who bears the sins away from the congregation. There's a lot of debate there. But whatever the case, now we've come to this conclusion. Behold the man, look at him. That little baby's grown up, and now his body is marred, his visage is marred, so he doesn't even look like a man, and he's about to be crucified. Look at him. But that's not the last of the beholds. Because after he's resurrected, Jesus uses this word himself. I think it's to the ladies. Off the top of my head, I think it's to the ladies. And, and he says to them, behold, I go before you. He talks, says, go tell my disciples, behold, I go before them into Galilee. Go tell them to meet me. But he's a resurrected Lord. You look at the little baby in the manger and you see new life. If you look at the resurrected Jesus, you see new life again, real life, life again, resurrected life. And he is now, he's not just a baby. He, he's, he's not even just a a savior, he's going to say to his disciples, all authority, that's a word that's sometimes translated power. All governmental power, all authority is given to me in heaven and in earth. I have it all. And then he says, you'll be my witnesses. And then he leaves. And we find our fifth behold. And it's the angels again. We come back to the angels. Behold, this same Jesus, who you saw go away into heaven, he will come back like he went to heaven. And not as a baby, not as a savior, but as a conquering king. He will come he will come down south of Israel, I think, south, south of the south, southern part of Israel, and like a Roman general marching into Rome with his armies, he will march up to the Mount of Olives, the very place where he himself was arrested so many century, millennia before, but now not to be taken captive, but to take captive. He will, like a Roman general, come to the Mount of Olives, and he will declare himself king, not even over Israel, but over the whole world. And that's when now he is highly exalted. And now he's given a name that's on his vesture and on his thigh. King of kings, Lord of lords, look at him. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the Lord of glory. That's who you are.